So yeah, the, this is this is was kind of the first rumor. Luke Sky Luke Stone claims Luke Skywalker is not a significant part of the matrix of new content going forward. I don't think this is um out of the ordinary. I mean, I think there's uh, plenty of evidence that this is the case has been the case since the very beginning. I always like to point to this uh, Fortune um magazine uh, interview that Kathleen Kennedy did back in 2015. It was actually a conference it's a fortune conference, uh, women in something conference. I don't know. Fortune right, magazines, no. women in conference. It's at the bottom of the article uh, that I always like to go to uh, point out where this has kind of been the case. There it is right there. Uh, yeah, right there. The, the, the fortune magazine's most powerful. Dang it. What is where it? did it go now? <laughs> yeah. No, you, you, like a picture loaded and it was like, ah, I don't know. Uh, one more there we right go. there. Uh, yeah, so I always like to point to this Fortune Magazine's most powerful women's summit uh, in 2015 that this is the case. I mean, I, I've said this a number of times. I, I've read this on stream a number of times. But if you're new and you don't know about this, basically before The Force Awakens even released into theaters, uh, Kathleen Kennedy appeared in appeared at this conference where she made it very clear that she was injecting feminism into Star Wars, not only um, through Lucasfilm's uh, internal culture by hiring people, but also through the stories that they were going to tell. And if we just scroll down a little bit, uh, I'll read it for you. So she said, I think the interesting path we've had is the conversation that took place around consumer products because there are a lot of companies that were in place who frankly didn't initially feel that Star Wars was for girls. It's because it's not. It's, it was mainly a boy's brand. It's very clear that the reason why Disney bought it is because they had their Disney princesses already. They wanted to get into boys. It's also why they acquired Marvel. They have now turned both of them into Disney princess franchises and um, told boys to eat it. And then at the same time, they're also claiming that gender doesn't exist and that you can or sex doesn't exist and you can... Um, Flip flop, and they're paying for for surgeries and stuff like that. So you can see how far Disney has declined within the past decade, uh, which is also representative of our culture at large. But that's beside the point. Um, <laughs> that's a, that's, I guess that's a, a rant for another day, maybe maybe for yeah. the Black Pill stream. Yeah, it's Black Pill. Yeah. <laughs> but anyways, so she says, and when you have a, a company situation where between Lucasfilm and Disney, we were all looking at the situation saying, no, with Star Wars, we have to change this. We have to make sure that we create products that are in a sense appealing to both boys and girls. What's wrong with that? So she's already talking about fundamentally changing the products that the company created in order to, quote unquote, appeal to girls uh, as well. And then she tries to, like, uh, couch it in this corporate speak, saying they're appealing to both boys and girls. Like, you can't do actual, um, you can't just appeal to boys and that girls might like it as well, or you can't appeal to girls, and maybe some boys like it as well. But I think there's a lot of evidence. Lego, I know Ethan Van Skyver talks about this. Lego has done uh, a very interesting study that shows that boys and girls definitively play differently from each other because they think differently because they are different. Uh, it's very like we have lots of evidence, scientific research that shows this. Nevertheless, she says the fact that the company was brought by the Walt Disney Company has been amazing. Because they very much support the fact that we are trying to grow in the workforce a number of women in executive positions and in all positions inside the company. And with the movies that we were making and with the protagonists that we're putting in the stories. So I get a huge amount of support with that. So she's talking about female protagonists, Ray, Ray. et cetera, et cetera, because they're talking Force Awakens instead of Luke uh, and, and your traditional male protagonists or primary male protagonists that Star Wars had. Obviously, uh, Leia is a secondary protagonist, but we did have, she was in the original Star Wars films. Uh, but then she goes on and talks about the, the culture that she's trying to create here. But we have 50% of our executive team are women and six out of eight of the eight people in my story group are women. And I'm sure there's a lot of people that would be surprised that we're making Star Wars movies. And the majority of the people involved in the development of those stories are women. And I think it's making a huge difference in the stories that we're trying to tell. So she's clearly changing the culture, changing the stories they're telling and changing the product that they're actually trying to sell. This is again, this was in 2015. Like I can't, uh, reiterate that enough. This is 2015. This was eight, this was eight years ago, almost eight years ago in 2015, before Force Awakens even came out. That Kathleen Kennedy was saying this, telling us what she was going to do to Star Wars, and we clearly have seen the result within less than a decade. But let's go back up to uh, to this rumor here uh, at the top, um, because th and again, this is why I think this this is this rumor. There is like truth to this rumor because like she told us that that it was true in like 2015. But basically, the rumor goes that, I guess, uh, about two years ago, 
Hasbro, Lucas, Lucasfilm had a meeting with Hasbro, a consulting firm, and some other partners where they made it very clear that uh, Luke again. Skywalker. What's that? Hasbro. Hasbro it is yeah. again. Hmm. That they would that uh, Luke Skywalker will never be a main character in Star Wars again. And Pro explained in the video, he said he was at best allowed to be an occasional cameo, uh, which is what we kind of saw in the end of season two of The Mandalorian and then uh, in the book of Boba Fett as well. Uh, but then he goes on and says that uh, Lucasfilm sees Luke Skywalker as, quote, a cobwebbed character. He is a museum piece. He sells, but he is not a significant part of the matrix of new content going forward. So if Grogu is going to stay with Luke, then you lose Grogu. He's out of sight with the exception of some glancing exposure. And for everybody in that meeting, meeting that would have been catastrophic because they want to, like at that point, Grogu was the hot, the hot ticket item that they wanted to sell. They wanted to make money off of because these guys are still kind of in the toy. They're in the toy business. They want to sell toys, or at least uh, that's what they tell us. Uh, I think uh, we've seen, and this is my opinion, uh, with a lot of evidence to prove it, these people are not in the entertainment business. They're not in the toy business. They're not actually in trying um, to sell a lot of this stuff. They are in the social change business. Uh, and I think that is very evident about by the stuff that they are uh, creating and trying to sell to you. Uh, so he would also later on go on and say this in his video. He says, the page is turned on Luke Skywalker. Uh, he's reading. He's reading an email from someone. So this person, his source, is saying the pages turn on Luke Skywalker, Lucasfilm said regarding current active media. Cameos and on-screen references to him are the best anyone can expect going forward. Nothing more. Don't ask. All the way from Kathleen Kennedy. Uh, and it's not just Luke Skywalker, but all of the original trilogy characters. He went on and added this. The original trilogy characters are stuck in the past, good for stunt cameos, and for legitimizing new characters and stories. However, various partners believe if they become desperate enough that Luke Skywalker can be used as a Hail Mary, so maybe they'll uh, bring him back uh, if that gets even worse than what it is now. Uh, so he and then he went on and, and revealed that this information came from a meeting two years ago and then was confirmed again in a meeting 10 months ago. And this is coming from these two sources that he discusses in the video. Excuse me. And then he says, following the success of the Mandalorian season two, that was Lucasfilm's position. They came out and said, you will uh, get no Luke. I, that's that's my fault. That's the typo there. Get no Luke. Um, so there's that. Uh, you will and, and get yeah. not Luke, and you will have <laughs> Ray instead, and you will like it. Right. So exactly. And uh, not only are you going to get no Luke, you're not going to get uh, you're going to get Leia instead in Obi Wan Kenobi, and that's uh, what you and McGregor says. Uh, we won't scroll down, but I, I do cite that in this article here. Uh, he appeared. You can just leave right here. Okay. Uh, he appeared at um, I don't know Boston Fan, Fan Expo Boston at the end of last year and said that the original Obi-Wan Kenobi scripts were actually supposed to be about Obi-Wan and Luke uh, going on a journey or whatever, not Obi-Wan and Leia. So they were already even writing him out uh, there. Uh, if you remember uh, as well, there was a um, episode of Rebels Recon that was put up on the official Star Wars YouTube channel. Uh, their host, Andy Gutierrez, who's still with the company, is walking through the, like, the Lucasfilm offices and... Uh, as they're walking through one person's cubicle, there's literally a photo of Luke Skywalker with a giant red X uh, through his face, clearly. And that was like before, oh. like we had even more evidence of this. This is one of the first kind of somebody uh, got fired ideas, for like, that one. <laughs> he no longer works there. Uh, I will say that. I don't know if he got fired for that. But anyways, um, but he said it was just like, oh, it's just my imperial decor. But it's like on the outside of his um, cubicle, like. It's not on the inside. It's like on the outside and it didn't look like it was, I don't know. I don't, I don't, let's say I don't believe the guy. <laughs> Put it that me, way. But that's you. what he claims. Let me ask you, if you're going to make a Superman movie, do you hire somebody who hates Superman to work on it? I mean, really? Uh, yes, apparently. I mean, that's literally what, um, what's her name? Leslie Hedlund has said that she hired people specifically that knew nothing of Star Wars and were even like maybe they don't hate Star Wars, but they don't even know anything about Star Wars to you write on her yeah. Star Wars show. Nice. So I would not be if you're hiring people like that. I would not be surprised if you're also hiring people who actively hate the old Star Wars, hate the old, hate like people like us that like the original Star Wars stuff. And uh, are openly critical of the new version 
uh, of the new Disney version of Star Wars. Before we get too far from this point, though, <laughs> Scribe Light made, a, made one heck of a gem here. He says, they gave Luke's Jedi Academy job to Rey, his Thrawn job to Ahsoka. It takes at least two women to do the job of one man. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah, I didn't even I didn't even point this out in the article because I've already I'd already written an, another article on this about the Rey movie and how they're going to do that. That's exactly Scribe, bro. 100% on point. So I didn't even put it in this article. But yeah, they announced the new Rey movie and how she's actually going to be building the jedi order and that's literally stealing from luke uh luke's arc in the expanded universe again i'm not a big eu fan but i, I i'm i'm at least aware that he does rebuild uh the jedi order on that yeah silent revolution here the jedi Ca academy is now in the hands of a descendant of a sith master yes uh, mm. so you have that 